Ah, uh, seeing the results of Caitlyn's actions. Enforcers all about. Oh, but it's, it encourages more of a resistance movement. Yeah, you push, they push back. Mm. Still the hunt for Jinx. Is that Kate in there? She looks, oh yeah. Just the gloves, the uniform. I mean, part of the, well, it's the black and white as well. She looks different. Yeah, she's become, oh yeah, they all had blue hair inspired by her. She's inspired a resistance movement just as the OP obviously kind of gives away with her waving the flag. And yeah, we always see Victor with this mask. Is this like him embracing this new persona? Embracing the idea of him becoming this messiah? And we finally have context for the Black Rose in Ambessa's hand. Up again? The city's not going anywhere. I have an audience with the Mason's Guild first thing in the morning. With Maddie? <laughs> yeah, there must have been a time skip. So long. I thought Kate looked a bit different in that little sequence and Maddie looks a bit older. It wasn't this. Well, I thought Maddie was... Withdraw from the underground. I thought Maddie was quite young when we saw her before, but maybe not as young as I thought. Not without Jinx. So she's thinking of calling it all off. I've learned so much from her. You're our leader. The enforcers. So it's been long enough for Kate to and maybe mellow down and start to doubt herself a bit. In the grey corner, our undefeated champion with claws like daggers and teeth like sharp. Okay, <laughs> she's hosting an uh, hosting an event. And a face that would make a bro mother squirm. Oh, they're not actually just really small and she's just doing this for Aisha, is she? Too well entered. I can't hear a crowd though. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I was waiting for it to cut to that. <laughs> Show some effort. I was thinking, even though she's become this figure for Zorn, Jinx wouldn't want to be in the spotlight as much like that. The only thing to do is... I just tattoos similar to Jinx's, yeah. Can she not talk at all? I know she hasn't until now, but I've just seen the sign language. And a deal's a deal. Oh, dyeing the hair. I didn't get to do much of this with my older sis. She was more into hitting things. <laughs> yeah, feeling some of that role she missed out on. I thought I was rid of her for good, but uh, you kind of remind me of her. Yeah, just gonna say she kind of looks like Powder with the blue hair. Yeah, she embracing Powder a little bit by having Isha here. Jinx is dead. Oh, really? She's hung up the mantle of Jinx as well. Huh. She seems actually kind of more sane at the moment here, doesn't she? Okay. Hex tech experiments. Overseen by Ambassador, though. Oh, of course, because Mel disappeared. She might be looking for her. Yeah, what, what the hell happened to Mel? Uh, <laughs> that doesn't look good. <laughs> Can't be certain the order was also behind the disappearance. Of the Jason order and Heimerdinger. Yeah, what happened to Jason Heimerdinger after being in there? Our instincts were right. They fear Hextech. So, this was the Black Rose people. They have my daughter, Rictus. Rictus, finally a name for him. <laughs> Doesn't seem like too much time has passed, but maybe like six months to a year. Not like multiple years, like the season one time skip. Did he catch that side eye? <laughs> ah, the blue hair. Yeah, giving it away. It becomes a symbol of resistance. Is this actually her? Or is it just someone kind of imitating her? 
Oh yeah, there was. A, I thought it was a hair, but it's just uh, tassels on that coat. Yeah. Okay. So the myth of Jinx is still about, but Jinx actually isn't the one doing it for the time being, at least. You think it's a copycat? I think we've made them desperate for something to believe in. Yeah, they've given them a symbol. I suppose I don't need to advise you on the hazards of professional entanglement. Hmm. Is that the advice you yeah, especially provide? with um, a kind of subordinate, a bit of a power dynamic there. If it wasn't Jinx at the checkpoint, one of them knows where she is. Hmm. And even if it was a copycat, you can make an example of the copycat. And returning peace to this city. Why is peace always the justification for violence? Yeah, I was worried about Kate before, but actually, after giving some time, she seems to have mellowed out a bit. We've lost so many. But is there just going to be one more? Like, if Maisie died somehow, would she snap again back into the way she was? But you will never rest knowing that she's out there. <laughs> nice, the fake split diopter. <laughs> Same time next week. Tomorrow, the effects have been diminishing. Ah, okay. Yeah, he needs it more and more, but he's getting used to it. Way out on the fringes. They say he makes miracles happen. Oh, Victor. Like nothing I'd ever seen before. Can't hurt to look, can it? But would Sallow be willing to go down into Zorn, into the fissures? Uh, that must be Victor she's talking about there. You're a symbol. Huh. You want a symbol? <laughs> uh, that was good. <laughs> spent his whole life trying to rally the Undercity together. And now she's actually achieved it. Yeah. Do you know how much he sacrificed to protect you? He believed in your potential. Well, then he shouldn't have died. You are the one who shot him. <laughs> Firelights, your fans, anyone. Firelights, everyone's going to be there. Yeah, a bit like the end of the last episode. And Vesa got everyone together. Tavika's going to get everyone on the underground together. Don't trip on the way out. Can they actually get the firelights on board, though? I don't know. I'm losing my snappy comebacks. Me, a hero. Yeah, she's just kind of talking to, talking to Silco. That was his chair. I got something going now. Friend. Some actual stability, yeah. Yeah, I'm worried for Maddie and Isha actually. They're both like so much about holding back Jinx and holding back Caitlyn. Hmm. Both sides, yeah. They've lost so much leaving a candle. The lost ones. I was just thinking, like, Kate's mother, she wouldn't have wanted this. Oh, and of course they think Echo's dead, because... So, they've gone missing as well. I'm ending a Jace and Echo when they were in the Hextech thing. Innocence getting carted off to Stillwater. We gotta choose... Okay, Singed is here. What was his whole thing with that, uh, beast, you know? As Zonites. Ah. All here for Jinx, of course. Is that actually her, is it, Aisha? Okay, that's what they needed. <laughs> Just a fist raise in resistance. And they're attacked midway through, of course. You're all under arrest. What for? They're just standing in a town square. I guess the ones in Jinx costumes. Now me might be a good time for Jinx to actually show up. Oh, nice! <laughs> Got at least one good hit in. Yeah, just throw her to the side. It'll go a bit easier because she's a kid. Singed, what have you got up your sleeve? Is that going to summon it? Is it attracted to the blood somehow? 
Yeah, because he was like injecting his own blood. They got her. What? Oh. Oh, okay, a bit of time has passed. Took everyone. They took her. And of course, that's the second that happens, her mental state starts to go. She needs Isha for that stability. I thought it was all happening simultaneously and Jinx might show up while some of the battle was still happening. I'll tell you a secret. We won't be staying long. He's got some help on the way. Oh. Oh, that's cool from his perspective. And it's just leaving a scent. Ah, oh, so cool. Really low fr frame rate, animalistic. All completely hand drawn as well, it looked. Don't suppose you can swim, huh? Lefty. <sighs> well? I feel like Shavika. Shavika? Savika should have some backup arms, you know? Uh, just keep two or three around in a few places. So you're not just reliant on one. Mm, Jinx? <laughs> yeah, never heard that before. Oh, okay. Just thinks she's imitating Jinx. The master criminal wears pants like that. What's wrong with my pants? You look <laughs> <at> the surface <laughs> Wow. Oh, and she can just pretend she's taken in Savika, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Don't give it away with your signature markings, yeah. Big mama, don't you take her in? I gave her a choice between this and a swim in the harbor. Wow, so they're straight into that prison. <laughs> it's funny seeing like the one or two side characters that you've seen before come back up like this guy here. And Bess is still there. There's a sliver of blue hair sticking out, yeah. Oh, she could end it all here. Cell block C. Carry on, officer. Did Ambessa see that? I thought like, yeah, that streak of blue hair, that's such a giveaway. Actually, this is still quite good because they were after Jinx. If Jinx shows up as, you know, their freedom to help them escape. It's a pr pretty uh, quick prison break from them being captured to being released. You gotta act quick, you know? Yeah, she's realized. It just, she did notice it just took a bit of time to process. Here I am, you're a big fat hero. Believe and believe it. Well, just confirming that she's actually real, yeah. Where's Isha as well? Not in this room, at least. Yeah, actually seeing the human connection of her actions the human side of it. I don't know if I actually have a name for the bat guy, Echo's right hand man. But we've got the wild card of the beast coming in as well. Has Isha had some special treatment because she's so young? <laughs> I was wondering how he was going to get across if he was going to swim. Oh, she's ready for battle. Ooh, cool blade design, actually. Almost like a Kai, where, the bit where you can catch someone else's blade. Hmm, does seem like it's powered, though. Like... There's like a kind of energy tank or something on his back that feeds Shimmer or something into it. Oh. Oh, we're not completely safe yet. <laughs> Singe knows to keep himself hidden. <laughs> Thing is, is the beast just going to be completely um, indiscriminate? I don't know. I feel like he's just going to attack everyone. 
thought Singed might at least say something to <laughs> Jinx and Isha. <laughs> Oh, yeah, don't even see it. Oh, okay, so it is part, um, like, technology. Oh, yeah, so much blood. Oh, didn't do much, but it did do something. Still really not seeing much of it at all, keeping it in shadow a lot of the time. Oh, that was a sick shot. They've been doing that a lot, the kind of slow-mo frames. Oh, that feels really familiar, being carried away and like reaching out like that. Was powder like that on the bridge before or something? That imagery, it feels like it's um, like mirroring something. I just can't put my finger on it. Oh, she's holding her own really well. Yeah, just a massacre. Oh, and it seems like, what do they call them? Jinxers. They were mostly all right there. Of the survivors, it looked like it was Jinxers. You're an old stink maw. Yeah. Smile. Oh, just gonna do a self sacrifice. <laughs> Thing is, his goal isn't really jinx. It's to free. Yeah, it's to free sh singe. <laughs> oh, the music. Is that fucking Vanda? Warwick. I oh, I just got chills. I mean, it said Warwick, but how would who the hell is Warwick? How would Warwick know who Powder is and singed? Vanda's body did fall off that bridge. So Singed would have had access and was doing experiments on Vanda's body. Because Vanda was already like hulked out on the Shimmer before, wasn't he? Fuck. Okay, so that was Arcane Season 2, Episode 4. That just has to be Vanda. I like thought about it a bit more. I'm like, there, there's no other possibility. Who else would know Powder by Powder's name? who else is built like that and who, like what other situation with it has to be vanda is makes complete sense singed had access to his body he fell into the shimmer before hulked out and then died later shimmer must have gone back in shimmer singed must have gone back in and got his body and then started doing experiments on it, kind of morphed it with these beasts that he had found, that like two-headed wolf beast thing, and yeah, made him into Warwick. But of course, there is still some Vanda in there, some Vanda instincts, the ability to talk. He could talk to Powder, he said Powder. And of course, <laughs> he's, you know, not caught up on the situation at all. Powder is now Jinx. So much time has passed for him. Um, I don't really know, like, cognitively how good everything is up there. Is it just all based on instinct? I don't think he's going to be, like, a fully kind of sentient being. Vander is completely back. I think it's going to be, like, Vander's heart is still there, but the brain is just a mess of a mix of everything you know that must be what's happening there so we start the episode with um actually maddie and kate in bed together there must have been a little bit of a time skip i'm guessing like six months to a year maybe a year and a half at most just in terms of like how much aisha has grown how different some of the characters look they're not too different you know we're not seeing that much of a difference in the character designs at all so it's been a little bit of time 
Um, they've, you know, set up checkpoints and things that they were, you know, checking for these um, jinxers, these jinx supporters. There's been enough time for that to kind of poke his head out the woodwork, these jinx supporters to kind of rally together and start rebelling under her name. But I was surprised, actually, she has mellowed out ever so slightly. And I think that's a good thing. But I just don't think that's Jinx's character. I don't think that's the end game for Jinx's character. She's mellowed out with Aisha, but I really worry for Aisha. I think eventually something is going to happen. Aisha's going to die. It's either going to be Jinx's fault or it's going to be Caitlyn's fault. Or it's going to be Vi's fault somehow. And everything's just going to fall apart once again for her mentally and just for the world too. Because this is definitely like the most stable we've seen Jinx since she's become Jinx. And even she was considering maybe giving up the title of Jinx or she said Jinx is dead, you know. She was going to maybe just live in the shadows, no longer make kind of public appearances like that. Um, but of course, she's become a symbol now. She's, there's more to live up to and... Now that she's freed those people, freed the Jinxers, it's, um, they've seen her in person and she can see the impact she's had on them. So I think that's going to motivate her to maybe take up this role of freedom fighter now. And I think the same is true for Caitlyn in terms of Maddie as well. Um, I always thought Maddie was a bit younger than she actually is, but I think actually, no, she does look in the kind of similar age range, maybe a bit younger than Caitlyn, but not not as much as I'd initially thought. Um, and even if they weren't in this relationship that they are in now, I think a potential Maddie death would still be devastating for Caitlyn and it's going to be even more devastating now that they've got an even deeper connection here because it does actually feel like Caitlyn as well has mellowed out and she's starting to consider the consequences of all of these kind of forces they put into play these checkpoints um she's starting to see you know it's take it's been a while it's taking a while to capture jinx it might not be on the table that we can actually capture her she might have you know gone somewhere else left um she's you know realizing there could be copycats as well clocked that but she's mellowed out i think just given the time she was so in her grief about her mother's loss in the first act now given some time she has mellowed out and i was really worried she was going to become full-on kind of fascist leader there um especially you know the end of the last episode all of the kind of chanting and everything and the way she was dehumanizing the zornites but actually here she's mellowed out but if she goes into grief again, is she going to be vulnerable to manipulation again by Ambessa, you know? And you can tell just how much power the Enforcers have over Zorn too. Just with, you know, that kind of rally they had, they arrested everyone there. What really could you arrest them for? They were all just gathering like in a town square. It wasn't even like a protest. It was like a gathering and Savika giving a speech. What what laws are broken there? They probably can just make up their own laws to kind of police actions that they don't like. I mean, I say that, but the UK is constantly clamping down on new laws about protest and it's becoming worrying here as well. And as well, um, we just have the disappearance of Jace and Echo and Heimerdinger. Um, obviously, there was all the stuff happening last episode with them in the wild rune, in whatever you're going to call it, that almost like pocket dimension of the Hextech. But it, forced, it caused them to disappear. So they and Mel have disappeared. It leaves Ambessa kind of basically in charge. I mean, she already was anyway, pulling so many strings. But um, what what is going on there? Have the Black Rose people taken Mel to wherever the Black Rose people are from? If they do a sequel series that's different, if they don't address where Mel is from, and they do, they could do a show set in the kind of Black Rose area. I don't know what that's called, but Mel could show up there. But I don't think they'd be setting that up so early. I think they'd set that up in a final episode of the show rather than there in episode three and just have her missing from the next six episodes. So I think Mel 
will be back. And I think Jace and Echo and Heimerdinger will be back as well at some point, somehow. But like, where exactly are they? Could it even just be the possibility that time works different where they were? So for them, it was just those 10 minutes. But for the outside world, it is six months, a year, two years. Or have they gone somewhere? Maybe they are just underground or it did teleport them, who knows. But the thing is, if they were still underground, Echo wouldn't have abandoned his people in the way that they had, you know? So I think they must be somewhere else. And yeah, we just had a good old prison break here as well. Um, and Bessa did notice, but it just took her too long to process. And by the time she did process what was happening, Warwick obviously showed up. I'm not sure about how much Singed has like programmed Warwick in a way obviously there was something with his blood where he could send off a scent and we saw like the path through the air Warwick was tracking him down but I think that's just like an instinctual let me track down my father my creator kind of thing but I'm not sure how indiscriminate Warwick was when it came to who was in the prison because like it looked like it was mainly enforcers who were hurt but it might have just been mainly enforcers who were fighting back. When we cut to the other room, it was only Jinxers who were still alive, but that might just be coincidence. I don't, I don't know kind of how much Singed has programmed in, you know, just attack people from Piltover, just attack the enforcers. I don't think he can go that detailed into it, but I guess we'll see later on. Okay, so I think that's everything. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts down below, and check out the Patreon page where you can get next week's episode right now. Okay, catch you guys later.